Hello, this is a uh, quick like BIOS review of the ASRock B450M Pro 4. That's the physical motherboard, it's micro ATX, denoted by B450M. Uh, full size micro ATX, if that makes a difference, but we're just going to be going over BIOS, we'll get into the physical later. So let's boot. And then the keys are like all denoted, well here, here's the boot screen. You have four options for whatever reason. And I already, so spam delete, and here we go. Okay, so we're in the BIOS right now, and uh, it's got a graphical, like, with mouse and everything, like all the newer motherboards, instead of, like, selecting everything with your keyboard, which I think you can still do. Yeah, which is my usual preferred method of uh, navigating, but either way. Uh, this is, so this is your, that was your main page. It gives you some information on your UEFI, your processor, and your memory. Um, I have a 2200G, keep in mind, so this is for specifically an APU build. I don't know with a graphics card or a different, like a 2600, if that changes much. But um, this is with a 2200G. Um, okay, so this is your, uh, this is a like a very simple overclocking interface. You have here your CPU, and that's on manual right now. You could put it to auto, but let, you know what, let's actually do that as an example. So it puts it on auto, and it just shows you that. And then DRAM, you can load up an XMP profile. If not, it'll just go to auto, and that usually runs at like 2133, just like JDEC spec, right? And you really want to use your XMP profile if you can. Here's a cool feature. It has uh, your DRAM timings here. So you can go in here and mess with a lot of timings. Like, it's nice that AMD updated their Agessa, and you can now uh, do a bunch of stuff with your secondary, and I think even some tertiary timings like these. Yeah, these guys are tertiaries. Uh, proc ODT. I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, data bus, don't know what that means, but there it is. Uh, you have gear down and power down. CAD bus, don't know what it means, but it's there. Um, actually, you know, let's just click into these folders really quick. Uh, so it has these, whatever those are, if that interests you, and then CAD bus, which has that. Um, so that's your DRAM timing configuration, which is nice that it's right there so that you can use it, unlike the advanced tab, which we'll get to later. GFX configuration, usually set to auto. They'll think it'll be like 1100 megahertz, just a default 2200G thing, and then this also goes to auto. Uh, if you play input in zero, it'll just go do auto. So as an example, uh, just zero, enter. It'll just go to auto. I don't know what that means, but... Um, It'll do that, I guess. Uh, core voltage, you can mess with it if you so choose for offset. And then you have DRAM voltage, which I keep mine at 1.4 to get a little bit better on timings, just because it's right there instead of in a folder, again, which we'll discover in advanced. But yeah, and then you can have, you can save user defaults and then you can load. I have good bread and fast bread, which fast bread is my, like, ridiculously a overkill V core and uh, core clock for um, hardware bot which I'm just getting into. And then you get into tools, then for RGB, uh, RAID, uh, drivers, this is like um, LAN and like internet driver install. So you have that, and then uh, if you want to just like completely wipe your SSD, I guess that's for that. Uh, update flash utilities. I've used it twice to update from 1.1, which the board ships with, up to one, or which I received the board with, to 1.2 and then up to 1.5. I haven't noticed many differences except for in the OC tweaker. They removed, which this sucks. I don't know why they did it, but they removed SOC voltage, which was right here. And then everything else was just moved down a notch. And they just removed that in board 1.5. So I might even go back to 1.2 so I have it right there. But uh, yeah, this is your uh, advanced page. It's kind of a shit show and I'll show you why later. But it's there, we'll go over it. So I've gone over tools, hardware monitor. Uh, this is to check your fans. Fan tuning, if you click on that, it'll like take a little bit and assess how fast all your fans go by going through like 10, 15, 20%, all of that. Uh, it takes a little while. I'm not going to do it here, but you can essentially, it just ramps all these from like 0 to 100 and checks like how the PWM signal reads and all that and uses that to uh, go off your profiles, which go in here. So here you have kind of a graphical interface. I don't like this, but you can use it if you want. Just as an example, if you have silent, that'll have like that preset. If you have standard, it goes to that preset. Performance, performance moves a little higher, and then full speed, you just flatline at 100. So let's exit that. I don't like it. Yeah, discard change. And then here's where I really do like. So I have five fans hooked up. 
And at the bottom you have over temperature protection and case open feature if that's important to you. But um, just as like a general display, uh, let's go with this one. Um, I have all these set to the same, so temperature, they're all monitoring T-Control, which you can choose, motherboard CPU or T-Control, and they have uh, custom settings, or you can do, you know, your modes. Uh, control mode, you can have DC or PWM, which I, nah, whatever. And then you can have, uh, some of them you can change, like, water pump or chassis fan, whatever you choose. Um, I don't have any water, so I don't use it. And here's my like settings that I use for controlling my temperatures off of T-Control. It works like in OS. Um, CPU doesn't really work too well. And that, I, I don't know, like this temperature is just off and it doesn't change really. So I think there's something wrong with my CPU temperature monitoring. Uh, and I don't trust it at all. Motherboard, again, I don't trust it at all. So I just go off of T-Control and that works in, by, uh, in OS. In OS it works. So that's your hardware monitor slash fan control page. Security is if you don't want anybody screwing around with your BIOS and then boot. You have your boot options. Uh, let's go to just to click in this folder see what's in there. So yeah, there's your other boot options if you want. Um, fast boot, I don't care about it. But that's the op the options there if you so do if you really do care about it. This is CSM compatibility support module, which I don't know what it does. I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, but it's there if you need it. So that's that's all that. And then exit, just standard exit options, save or don't save or load defaults or whatever. And then um, this I don't know. Uh, let's no, let's not do that. Um, I guess this is just like the boot from the UFI, like which I only want to boot into now. That's a, yeah. So I useful maybe. I'm not going to use it. Uh, let's go to advanced. All right, this page gets a little bit uh, awful. So let's go into like CPU config, not so bad. You just have like cool and quiet and like some other options here. Let's say you go into like Northbridge. Um, actually, yeah, say you go into Northbridge, so you just have that option. Then Southbridge, uh, you have your other options. Storage config, again, more options. Super IO, HTPI, trusted computing, and this is where it starts to turn into kind of a shit show. So, uh, yeah, let's let's do this. So now you have like folders within folders, which is why I dislike this as Rock BIOS is because you have to click into folders. In, so you have to click a folder and then into folders and you don't get a preview at all of what's in that folder So as an example, let's go into like Zen common options You have all this stuff and then you have to click into this and then you have to agree that um, The whatever is happening and then you can like Mess with it. So I don't like that. I love it's so clunky and it's hard to get to instead of just like the OC tweaker where like you have your thing and then you have like in the memory like you have your memory and then you have your DRAM time and configuration. If they had like everything DRAM related right here, that would be so nice. Like just have all your DRAM options here. You can have like your your voltage, you can have your timings, you can have pretty much everything you need for DRAM right there. And it'd be the same with GFX or CPU and that would be your overclocking tab. And then this advanced would be like just a bunch of other excess things like all this Northbridge and Southbridge configuration stuff. Like that would be so nice, but it's not like that. Anyway, click into AMD, P we'll go back to CBS, but PBS is all the bunch of options that you have for doing whatever you want. Um, if any of these matter to you, well then, there you go, you have it. But on an $80 motherboard, like, I don't know if you're going to be doing NVMe RAID or anything. So, uh, yeah. But going back into AMD CBS, let's go, like, let's work our way from the bottom. So now you see where the shit show starts. Like, this, again, folders within folders. And I'm not going to click through all these because I don't want to. Uh, I might, well, I don't know. I guess I could. But it's a waste of time. And it just gives you a general idea. If you have any like questions, I can answer them for you. But yeah, this is just what they have. So NBIO is like some gra mostly like graphics related things. Um, and I think it has something about SOC. I, I don't know what the VID is. But you have that. This is for memory. You have uh, memory mapping. Uh, common options is, uh, again, l leads <laughs> into more folders. So you have that. Uh, DF is also memory, but different options about memory. Uh, so yeah, this is 
ASRock's BIOS on the uh, B450M Pro 4. See, I'm not lying, I promise. And it's it's not good. I don't like it. It's not very fun to go around, and it's really hard to get your overclocks like dialed in exactly how you want them. But there you, it's what it is. So uh, that's all the info. Thanks.